Hello, everybody, and welcome to Off the Rackham Sal. I'm Tiffany. So today we're going to be talking about some books that came out this past week that we enjoyed or didn't enjoy. We're going to review books that came out this past week. And then give you recommendations for books that are coming out this week. What do you mm -hmm. think you should pick up? Yeah. Yes. We already introduced ourselves. Yeah, we did. Great. Hey, listen, we're getting snow, so like I'm just I'm checked out. You got snow on the brain. This is checked. No, I'm not checked out. I'm here. No, I'm checked into this. Yes. It's going to be nonstop comic pop action because your day job will be snowed out. That's but right. The internet doesn't get snow days. What? But I want a snow day. Well, you're just going to have to wait. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Right? Let's do yeah. it. Let's let's make this happen, yes. Captain. Um, so me and the captain make it happen. Can make it happen. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So all right. Some some books came out this week. Yes. Uh, the one that I want to talk about that is the cover for this book, but I don't think is really that big. Okay. Because people aren't really talking about it too much. Sure. Um, is Daredevil yes. got relaunched under Chip Zdarsky? Yes. Um, with art by Marco Cicchetto. You're not that's familiar a, with I'm Mr. Cicchetto's work? That's a great name. Um, I have said it a lot over these several years, and I feel like, <laughs> I don't know why, like every time I think, like, oh, Marco Cicchetto, I know that name, mm -hmm. I go, what, what do I know that name for? Like, why do I know him from something? And? Um, I don't have any idea. Oh. I can't place it at all. Um, oh. That being said, uh, getting into the art for this book before I get into what actually happens in it, uh, the art's really good. Chiteto does a nice job with character and uh, portraying a kind of like cinematic looking book. Um, but it's not one of those kind of cinematic books where it's like, I know how to draw storyboards, but I don't know comics for shit. Like, no, it actually looks like a comic book and everybody's really proportionate and everything. Uh, and, and, and it's pretty cool. Matt looks weird. I guess. Like, he looks too ruggedly handsome. Well, isn't he? He, I guess, but I never pictured him being this ruggedly handsome well, he is. i don't know you know I... what it is it's just awakened something in me i didn't i didn't expect to be so attracted to daredevil i don't know what it is about it but it's got to be the artist right because it's my, not me i thought the art is beautiful in this book it was it, it was really, great really really beautiful and there's like this really great moment in the book with young matt where it's just like a tight on his on his face neck yeah. up and like it's just the shading's really excellent just really, really good. You are correct on that <laughs> assessment, or at least that I agree with you. I should say. Thank you. I shouldn't say you're correct because it's about criticism. No. <laughs> but uh, but I do opinion. like it. Uh, and um, as far as the writing is concerned, Chip Zdarsky won me over. Uh, he pushed me away with his Howard the Duck, which, by the way, mm -hmm. engendered him to a lot of people because his work on Howard the Duck is celebrated as one of the best runs in Howard the Duck in history, um, which will Quack. be put to the test. Uh, when the Howard the Duck Hulu animated series written by Kevin Smith comes out. I don't know if you knew about that. But Hulu is rolling out with a whole bunch of uh, different Hulu-centric animated shows, mm -hmm. which includes uh, Dazzler and Tigra. Is that a show that they're going to be together? They're going to be together. Modoc, Howard the Duck, and something else. I don't remember what. But uh, they will all team up in a combined show called the offenders at least it's modok and not mojo that's true but i would love a mojo show <laughs> i would not um that's coming you know no. what I, mean? I think the reality is that dazzler and tiger the reason why it's dazzler is because i'll bet marvel had a deal with fox before uh disney purchased fox okay. i think the idea is that like that's why you're not getting like x-men shows and why it's not mojo why it is modok it's fine my hope is that Modoc is a show that is like Space Ghost Coast to Coast, where it's like a talk show. Talk Mo show. Modocs or Mojos? Modocs. Okay. Mojos should be a show like The Muppet Show, but for the Marvel Universe. Where what? it's like, it's just a production well, out of control. All right. So is this show right now. Why don't we talk about Daredevil? All right. So, uh, Jeff Sadarsky engendered himself to a lot of people with his incredible work. Yes. Um, by the way, he's a great artist as well. He did uh, the art on Sex Criminals, didn't he? Uh, yes. And uh, I always forget that because I like his work in Wait, writing. Did he? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... Snow. <laughs> this was fine. I, I thought it was cool. It didn't blow the doors off for me. Oh, I thought it was really I nice. thought it was a very fine Daredevil book. I thought this was really excellent. And th isn't this, this seems to be coming off of that like little like in between -y series that they did. That you enjoyed very much, I, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the idea being that uh, Charles Soule kind of like broke Daredevil. Yes. And then the interim series, I think it was A Man Without Feel, Fear, uh, mm -hmm. 
fixed him. Yeah, to some degree. To some degree. Right. And now we've got Daredevil, and he's back, but he's not quite 100%, and he's got he's to get himself back together. Mm-hmm. Um, we do get a couple of, like, cool Daredevil trappings. Uh, we get Matt as a boy, connecting with a priest. Mm-hmm. That's always very fun. Yeah. We've got Matt being a player, sleeping with chicks. That actually happens, and it's pretty fun. And it's actually, like, really, like, soberingly real. Yes. Um, which was really interesting yes. to see. Um, Matt is kind of a jerk, which I really enjoy. Uh, and of course we get Matt being Daredevil and Mm -hmm. the world where the Kingpin is mayor and he's like cracking down on costume superheroes, which is honestly a phenomenon that I haven't really felt in the Marvel universe. Like I remember when Jonah was, was, was mayor for a while Mm -hmm. and that like, you could feel Jonah Jameson being the mayor. Yeah. Um, in this, like Kingpin has been mayor and I have not really noticed outside of like, what Soul was doing in his wrap up for Daredevil, yeah, and this now it's also in Spencer's Spider Man run. I was gonna run. say you've been talking about that like not stop. It well, it's in that <laughs> run, but like who cares? Like okay. the plot point about Kingpin being Daredevil or Kingpin being the mayor in Spider Man is that he's using it to try and pit Spider Man against his right. fellow superheroes. Again, not feeling that anywhere else though. Okay, um, but it's great to see all the major key players being used properly okay and uh like i said like i enjoyed the issue i didn't think it was going to be like as table flipping as i expected like you see images of daredevil with fire and you had the implication of daredevil dying in the last series and Mm -hmm. you're like what's gonna happen like is daredevil gonna get cosmic is he gonna go like you know ghost rider like what's gonna happen with daredevil are we gonna do something that's just so unexpected Mm -hmm. and it's more like a total return to form yeah. Which, by the way, if you're, like, a hardcore Daredevil fan, you're like, thank you. Or at least you must be, because it is straight-up, true-to-form Daredevil stuff. Right. I mean, here's the thing. Every time they don't know what to do with a character, they can't just become a ghost rider. I'm just saying, you know, it's a dope-looking image. And it is. I'm if just... you're ever out of, if you're bereft of ideas, turn them into a ghost rider. <laughs> and it will it. sell like hotcakes, or flaming hellfire hotcakes. Hmm. So... Not as good as Aunt May's weed cakes, but fine. Certainly not. But, uh, you know, they, they have their own charm. Right. I, I enjoyed this a lot. Yeah. I, did, I read it right before. I was like... We, we started, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know. I, I liked it. I dug it. I like... Um, I liked Zdarsky's pacing. Right. Storytelling and the, the way he weaves in flashback sequences. Like Definitely. It, it's, it's just... It's very... I don't know. It, it's it's charming. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like such a crappy thing to no, say. No, I think it is charming. It like is. It, that's a fair assessment. I will also say uh, there's one thing that stood out to me. It was a big holy crap moment mm-hmm. when you see Daredevil for the first time. Mm-hmm. His boots are different. Yeah. Okay. Yes. He stuffs his pants into his boots. Yes. And you get some flaring. Yeah. I've never seen that with a Daredevil you, costume. You know, it's funny. Ever. I noticed that when he was like. Yeah, when he's leaping and his leg is extended, I was like, oh, look at that. That's neat. And then I noticed it for the rest of the book. (laughs) And I'm like, this is interesting. Perhaps it's a trend. Maybe it's a new boot Marvel renaissance. Remember when Captain America got the the, the, the buccaneer boots? Yeah. And then Cyclops had the buccaneers? Then they rolled it back because John Byrne didn't like the buccaneer boots. Maybe there's a whole new boot thing for Marvel. I don't know. But stay tuned and and, and keep your eyes glued to Zdarsky's Daredevil to see the future of Marvel. Marvel bootology in the superhero community. I'm excited. You sound it. It's very cool. <laughs> very cool. So would you would you recommend this book? Yeah, totally. If, if you are on the fence about Daredevil, check it out. If you love Daredevil, check it out. You're yeah. going to love it. Um, but if you are like, I don't like Daredevil, but I, or I like Daredevil enough, but I want to see him become something totally different, don't pick this up because it's not the same thing. It, it's exactly what you'd expect from a Daredevil book. <laughs> But in a good way. Mm-hmm. You know what it is? It, it, for me, Marvel 2 and 1. That, I was like, holy shit, this is a great book. Where Daredevil, I'm like, this is a good book, and you are doing a fine job. Right. But I wasn't like, oh, it didn't, it didn't 2 and 1 How often me. are you super excited about Daredevil books, though? I'm never. I want to be, though. I'm just saying Because I love Daredevil. I just want to be excited. Yeah, I understand. Uh, by the way, as we transition to the next thing, I wanted to point out we are going to be delving into the Super Chats a little bit, answering some questions, and addressing some of the amazing people in the chat on this live version of the show. If you want to participate yourself, just use the Super Chats, and you'll get your question answered here on the show live. The reason why we do it, and why we don't just answer every question, is one, the chat goes like a mile a minute. Two, uh, the Super Chats help us keep a roof over our heads and pay the bills. I paid some significant bills today because it's tax time, and let me tell you, uh, your contributions help significantly. The tax man comes 
him. Yeah, he does. Well, we want to keep him away. <laughs> so I'm going to mail him shit so he doesn't come to my house. That's good. But uh, Pricey8040, for example, says, something awoke inside Sal <laughs> to attract him to Daredevil. No, don't become Electro. No, yes, exactly. And if you don't, if you want to know what he's talking about, watch back issues of Marvel Knights Spider-Man. You'll see the, the you'll you'll get the joke, Mr. Roboto. Isn't Murdoch living in San Francisco? No, he's back in Hell's Kitchen, yeah, and uh, he is he is setting down roots, man. Mm -hmm. So no, that was a very small t period of time in Daredevil history. We right. went to San Fran, uh, and Kevin Kruger says, "Sal, you're my hero. When I nice. grow up, I want to be like you. Uh, to hold your horses, my friend. Uh, but I don't want to watch Girl Gilmore Girls. Fuck that. <laughs> and also, how about getting Tiffany Smith on the show? Well." Uh, there's a lot to unpack. First of all, I appreciate your support, but I must say, um, you don't want to be like me. Be your own man. Uh, you know, because I appreciate it, but no. Yeah. There's only one of me, and you don't want to do that's this. Uh, you don't want to watch Gilmore Girls. That's too bad, man, because you've watched the, at least the first six seasons or four seasons of Gilmore Girls. You can skip the revival. Mm -hmm. And uh, Tiffany Smith would never touch this show with a 10 foot pole, but regardless of that, we got 100% enough Tiffany's as it is. Thanks. So thank you very much uh, for being our, res our resident <laughs> Tiffany. Oh, thanks. I'm glad I check a box. No, 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 no. <laughs> you created the box because you predate Tiffany Smith by quite a bit. Do I? I think so. I don't think I do. I think you do in, in technical internet points. Oh. But uh, in terms of being a comic book personality. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and two mics, one takes us. Hey, Sal and Tiff, congrats on 75,000. We did you. hit 75,000 subscribers recently. 100,000 is just around the corner. Question, Yay. do you think Heroes in Crisis will have a happy ending? Um, as much as Tom King is capable of writing, I think so. I think it will have a... Uh, no, I don't think it's going to have a happy ending. I think it's going to be miserable. But, we have uh, no idea. It's also going to set up more things. Like It, it won't have an ending. I think it's going to be like, oh, look at the future of the DC Universe. Isn't it fun? <laughs> so no I don't um, but yeah uh, by the way uh, we had a, um, a a thing out there we were we, we, when we did our 75k live show we were like hey if we had 100,000 subscribers by the 20th of February yep me Ben and Ethan yeah or Ben Ethan and I yes will jump into better. a lake mm -hmm. on the 23rd of February take because a polar plunge Denville is doing a polar plunge that's a town nearby us and that's our PO boxes that's where our PO boxes so that's why it's related yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, they're doing a polar plunge and so if we inexplicably make 25,000 subscribers in the next two weeks which I don't see happening but even if it did if we were men of our word we will jump in the reason why it's gonna be men of our word is because Tiffany's not gonna do it but she will film it yeah uh, so we'll be Tiffany's not gonna do it I think I legitimately would have a problem like a medical problem. You have a problem when we're like, when it's like, hey, the the the, the Jersey Shore is seventy degrees. You're like, oh my god. I'm, I'm like, dying. this is amazing. It never gets to seventy know. degrees. You've literally looked at me, and I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah, you're, you're like, blue. No, I'm like, it. I'm okay. It's insane. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, that's your that's your charge out there. Get as many people as you can, and you'll see go. me and Ben and Ethan get really sick and really really uh, cold. You ditching the beret? Yeah. I love that beret, by the way. Thank you. It's like I gotta. I gotta... Does it hurt? Is no. It just tired of feeling a hat on my head. <laughs> you think you would just you, you would you, you would ignore it, but no. No. Rusky nine one one zero says, "Hey guys, which creators do you think have bought into their own hype the most?" I think we talked about a couple already, uh, so I'll just leave it at that. But moving on from Daredevil, there's a couple other books that came out that uh, we read. Um, what's one that you read? Oh, uh, I read. I'm not gonna go super in depth into it, but I just want to mention. Um, Die continues to go on, um, and I said that in a way where I'm like, because it's not good. No, it's very, it's very excellent. I really like this book. Um, it's written by Karen Gillan with art by Stephanie Hans. Uh, it's just a really cool, like, story, like Jumanji style story, but focusing on D and D. Um, and instead of it, it, it has like this sort of it sort of feel to it oh. too because it started off as an adventure as they were kids and they were sucked into this world and they came back out and like so much time had passed and now they're adults and it's happened again oh. and yeah i remember you telling this thing yeah about. yeah yeah so very cool um <laughs> very cool but for real but, for, but. <laughs> but actually really cool um this issue is still just as cool they uh talk about the idea of um being an adventurer in one of these games if you ever played D, &D the idea of it being dungeons and dragons who would go into a dungeon it's a dungeon yeah the point of the dungeon, why would you go into a dungeon yeah, it is to trap people in the dungeon and then how they're talking about really this whole world is the dungeon oh. and then they talk about dragons because the dragon shows up cool and uh, it's this world uh, building is really neat because it's done um in this like meta kind of way where like the person who created this world is someone who would make references because 
they're supposedly from reality. Our world, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, so they can make all these references. So, like, in this, we see like a fantasy crossover with like World War One or Two oh, kind cool. of thing, where it's like they have like these hobbit like individuals. There's like four of them. One of them really looks like Elijah Wood, and they're and they're being used to like they're a small squadron in like the. Um, uh, words escape me. The thing, foxhole kind of thing. Yeah, trenches. the French, yes. Trenches. <laughs> um, that um, they would sneak in after like a larger attack had happened and cleared the way and nobody actually clears the way and so it's just a disaster. Right. And there's like like mustard gas style stuff. It's, it's very Save It and Private Ryan but with the four of them. Okay. It's just, kind of, it's just kind of neat. It's like it's a, like a sad, sobering world even though it's fantasy and magic. Fantastical and, and magic. Yeah. So kind of cool. Chronicle. So check out Die. <laughs> yeah. Um, only four issues so far? Three. Three, Three, Three. issues. So and it's just really, like, really cool art. Totally. Um, we haven't talked about this book in a while, and I would really like to because I was recommended this issue uh, by quite a few people. Mm-hmm. Um, it is Uncanny X-Men number 11. Yeah, I remember you recommended it. Yes, I did, from uh, Rosenberg and LaRocca. This is a post-all-the-X-Men-are-dead world. Right. But Cyclops made it. Spoilers for extermination. Well, he's on the cover. He's on the cover. But uh, Cyclops made it Mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, the underworld or wherever the hell he came from. Right. The idea is that, like, we're seeing Cyclops is now back, Mm -hmm. but everybody else is dead. So we watch how Cyclops, like, navigates this world and how in the wake of there being no more X-Men. Yes. The U.S. government basically, or the world's... We see it through the lens of the U.S. government, but I think the idea is that, like, everybody, everybody jumps on the, like, okay, well, there's no more defenders of mutant kind, so let's fast track some mutant vaccines and everything possible. And it's very X-Men in terms of plot, where it's like, the world sucks, Mm -hmm. and everyone is a jerk, and the mutants have become even more second-class citizens than ever before, ever since House of M. Okay. So it's, it's interesting to see that. Uh... The story is basically watching Cyclops react to that, mm-hmm. even though we've been watching Cyclops do that since Cyclops finally like was right, right. according to the internet. Uh, and so it was kind of like, I've seen this already, but it was interesting because Cyclops is not trying to be the next Magneto in this. He's like trying to chill out. He's just, he wants to get to the bottom of it. It's like, okay, hang on, everybody. Let's just take a minute here. Yeah. I don't, I'm not distracted by Jean and right. potential of Wolverine taking Jean away from me. That's great. I don't feel the pressure of Professor X or leading. No, because I killed him and he's oh, still okay. dead. No, I mean, and I'm Phantom just, X, but whatever. I'm just going to, I'm going to have a coffee and, uh. I mean, he's still mad and he's still like, he tries to get his bearings and, and, and get the gang back together because okay. a couple of the mutants haven't died. Um, and this would include like, Jamie Madrox and okay. several other key components uh, who are not like fan favorite members, but s- definitely characters that are necessary to advance the plot to the point where X Men can try and achieve Jim Lee's status of like X Men prominence in the Marvel okay. universe. Um, the story meanders, but it is an epic story where like Cyclops basically reacts to the world's like, oh, they're like mom and dad aren't watching. Let's see what we do. And it sucks. And it like it's sad. It doesn't right. suck. Like the book is good, but right, it's like right, it's right. a sad view. Uh, there's a big anti mutant rally. Cyclops is there yeah. just to like kind of get and he goes, Oh, counterpoint, what about you guys being total douchebags? Captain America shows up and he's like, I had a feeling you were gonna be here. And like it, It's like, well, I mean, come on. But you get the whole like Avengers vs. X Men thing again and completely throw out the whole like mutant unity squad that Cap tried to form in the wake of AVX. Right. So that Captain America look like a dick in an X-Men book. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, Cyclops issues a challenge that any remaining mutants should meet him where it all began, which, of course, is the smoking crater of the uh, Xavier mutants School. Mutants or X-Men? Mutants. Okay. Well, every, if you're a mutant, you're an X-Man, as okay. co- according to Cyclops. Okay. And, like, all of the anti-mutant <laughs> organizations that have ever existed show up to kill him, mm-hmm. and then Wolverine shows up. And Cyclops and Wolverine team up and, and slaughter. Oh, that's fun. And it is fun. And it's kind of like, oh, look at them. Look at them teaming up. I was imagining the challenge where it's just like, there's all these mutants and they show up and like, it's awesome. And I'd be like, if I were one of the mutants, I'd be like, damn it. It's where, paper cut where, and beak. Well, I mean, I'd be like, where, where was that? Yeah. Where, where do they all begin? I don't know. I don't, I don't, how would I know? Yeah. What? It's like the end of Shawshank. You remember the name of the town, don't you? Oh. <laughs> 
Well, I was going to say that pager is showing, uh, giving total deja vu to that uh, Good, Bad, and Ugly Cyclops comic that we read. Completely. Like, I was like, holy crap, I've yeah. seen this before. It's Cyclops in a, like, bed and breakfast, yeah. in the snow, talking yep. to a cute chick. And yep. then some bad stuff happens instead. He, it, he just meets <laughs> with mutants and they give him bad news. Oh, right, like, he yeah. does, like, punch some people, but it's, you know. Okay. Um, ultimately, this is a quintessential X-Men book. This is an X-Men book for X-Men fans. Okay. And it's also, like, really long. There's a lot more. There's extra pages and shit. Okay. Um, it does kill a few characters, but uh, ultimately it is setting the X-Men on the path that I was expecting since Uncanny X-Men number one. But okay. haven't quite seen yet. All right. Um, the art leaves me in the cold a little bit. <laughs> uh, it's not great. Yeah, it was fine. It seemed not, fine. If it was great, or if it was... Pepe Larraz or Eminem or anybody, it would be like, oh, I feel excited. Because, like, here's the thing. This is not necessarily a hot take so much as it is just, like, an opinion from a 90s X-Men fan. Mm -hmm. The X-Men is 70% message, 30% art. Yeah. And that 30% is very heavy. Like, if you don't have that 30%, it topples over and doesn't work. Mm Mm-hmm. And if the X-Men don't have a message and they don't have, like, a point, then it's then it's going to be boring. But if the art isn't great, it's not quite there. Like, the yeah. X-Men don't work. The X-Men need to have excellent art on them at all times. When it doesn't, you get books that are like, eh. Excellent art. They need to be excellent. <laughs> it's true, though. So, there you go. anyway. That, I, I, I recommend it if you're an X-Men fan, but I would also, like... Come to expect better art okay. in an X book. That's fair. So you you gotta get that going. Um, I'm hoping that this is all like kind of like just a stepping stone for the true new renaissance of the X Men. So I see this as kind of like transitional period. Okay, all right, they're getting there. Yeah, they're getting there. They're getting there. Exactly. Uh, did you read Justice League number seventeen? I didn't. You did not. I didn't. Uh, it's by Scott Snyder and Jim Chung. Uh, it's a big retcon flashback. I'll be honest with you, I didn't even see it. You didn't? No. Well. Uh, I grabbed Daredevil. I was like, oh, he's going to talk about Daredevil. I'll read Daredevil. Daredevil. You would have loved it. It's all Jean Jones. He's on Mars. He meets with uh, Lex Luthor. <laughs> yeah. The two of them have like a clandestine meeting of the minds. Sure. Jean invites him. Lex, of course, is going to betray him. Jean already knows he's going to do that. Right. And Jean basically reveals to Lex like his history and how like a... a, a Brilliant yet terrible mad scientist plucked Jean as a child from the past and brought him to Earth and kept him as a prisoner. And they like exper- they were planning on experimenting on him. And there's a little boy who is part of the like experiment family. They were part of the scientist family. Okay. Who is able to communicate with Jean using like hidden messages in his clothes and then ultimately through telepathy he doesn't have telepathic powers but he knows jean does so the two of them go on like little little missions together and they play and they're friends and they're basically the only thing each other has in the whole world Mm -hmm. and then ultimately the little boy finds out that jean is going to be executed and so he encourages jean to go and he uh, through fun chicanery in the story which you should read um as long as he doesn't do the thing where he's just like, get out of here! I hate you! I'm, no. Like you would a dog trying to get it to Yeah, no, away, that does not happen, save thankfully. Save itself. <laughs> but, uh, in, 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 anyway, the, the idea is that Jean is sent back to where he was so that he can grow up on Mars and have a life and everything. All right. Apparently the stream died. Uh, give it a minute. It might be okay. We'll Let's... give it a second. Uh, oh no, we're good. See? Yeah. We're okay. Yeah, I'm looking right at it, but in any case. Uh, so, Jean reveals to Lex that the little boy was him. That Lex Luthor is Jean Jones' childhood friend. Didn't they do that in a Superman story? Yeah. It's an alternate one? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, but they did it in this. Okay. And uh, so Jean and Lex are friends, and they, like, fight some, like... How would, wouldn't he always, like... No, because uh, something erased their memories. And, like, it may have impacted Luther's father to have lost his ability to, like, have agency. And that's why he became an alcoholic and a bastard. And, like, Lex lost his youth and innocence because it was erased from him. Yeah. Um, (laughs) 
anyway, so it's a total retcon of Lex Luthor's history and past. And if you like that kind of thing, you're going to love this. If you don't, you're going to be like, what? How does this fit? It doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, so, okay. That's um, kind of weird. I but think we got some super chats. Too yes, we did. Okay. But it's a, it's a retcon to make it so that Jean is really important and also totally connected to Luthor. Okay. Uh, probably because Bendis has lots of Superman plans and Snyder can't use him. That's my meta reading of this. Oh, interesting. But that being said, it's a uh, it's a really fun story, and it's very like heartfelt. Chung's art is great. Okay. And it's a cute little story, and I really didn't care. Like I wasn't like in terms of I didn't have a problem with it. I enjoyed it, and I was like, eh, this retcon doesn't seem to make any sense, but I don't care. Like, okay. <laughs> but I'm not gonna argue with it. Whatever. Let yourself do it. Have fun. You know, have, have fun. Whatever. Just have a nice time. It worked for everybody. me. So I enjoyed it. And uh, it's here's the deal. Like Snyder's given the keys. So if you don't like it, you're not going to like DC for a long time because like right. Snyder's repainting the cosmology of DC and he's going to give everybody like everybody who's in this book has some crucial role to play for the foreseeable future. So get into it. Uh, if you don't, you're going to be left in the cold from D.C. for a while. <laughs> All right. So, there you That's have it. That's fair. Uh, but, I, I, like I said, it's a fun read. Okay. Feels like a, like a filler. Feels like the kind of the book that Snyder would have just given to James Tyne in the fourth. But instead, uh, Snyder wrote it. Yeah. And All I was right. like, oh. There you go. So, you were right. Some super chats did occur, and we should address <laughs> them. Uh, Mr. Abato says, Tiffany, are you from the Spider-Verse? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Nigel Red says, unpopular opinion, but I hated Uncanny X-Men number 11 just on the basis of how they killed off Loa and Blindfold in such an offensively ableist way. Uh, Interesting opinion. I don't think it was in an ableist way, uh, but uh, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, Mr. Abada says, if only they had an island for mutants. Yes, if only. If only there was a place they could all go and just kind of regroup. I'm actually really glad that they don't go in that direction. They should go into the Morlocks, into the sewers. They do go to the Morlocks. Oh no, Cyclops tries to get Calypso, and she's like, get the hell away from me. We hate you. <laughs> You're the worst. It's like, oh. That's great. Like, was... I bet if I was Storm, you'd have a different opinion. Yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, she'd hate her even more, because she upset yes. her. Uh, and Kevin Meyer says, I heard there was another hero in Far From Home. Uh, that's Spider-Man's uh, next movie. Yeah, I know it. Uh, popular <laughs> idea is that it would be strange, but I think it may surprise us with Daredevil. Love you guys, dude. Dude, I would love it to be strange. Either of them. I, for me, it's strange, because I love the Peter Parker, Doctor Strange relationship in comics, and I like what they started doing in Avengers. Yes. Granted that we don't know... I mean, like, I assume this happens after Avengers, or maybe it happens before Avengers, but if it happens before Avengers, it can't be Doctor Strange, because then he introduces himself, so... Yep. Timelines. Unless Doctor Strange erases his memory. Seriously, I want Daredevil in the MCU so bad, I don't care what movie he, he appears in. On Twitter, I made a joke about how, like, Black Widow, the movie, got uh, some delays, so yeah. it won't be filming until June. I was like, maybe it's because they're working it out so that Charlie Cox can be Daredevil in that movie. Because, like, who doesn't want Daredevil in a Black Widow movie? Right. Uh, but who doesn't want Daredevil in anything? Let's get Charlie Cox. Let's get Daredevil. Let's get Vincent D'Onofrio. Let's get this done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So... My theory is you won't see Doctor Strange in this, but no. you will see Spider-Man in Doctor Strange 2. Okay. I would I'll, take that I'll in take a heartbeat. It. I'll take it. I'll take either. Because I really, yeah. like you, I really want to see Pete and I'll Steve because they're both city boys. Yep. Yep. They are. It's just they have uh, very yeah. different um, charges. And yes. it's just I always like how much heart Spider-Man has and how Strange can't help but... Like, admire that. Yeah, he's like, look at you. Look at you go. <laughs> uh, how does your spider sense work? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, <laughs> it's like, look, because, like, anything you do makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm, I have magic. I don't have to explain it. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, what other what other books did you read on your own? I books on my own. All by myself. All by yourself. Gold star. Nice. Um, I read um, The Dreaming number six, which came out this past week, um, written by Simon Spurrier with art by Vilkis Evely. Mm-hmm. I always hope I'm saying that correctly. You, uh, I, I don't know, probably. No idea. No one has argued. No one has argued. It's true. No one has argued. Nor has Ms. Evely given us a hard time. She, she can feel free to do that. She's very talented. Yeah. Um, this is um, seemingly sort of summing up what might be the first arc 
of um, the Dreaming series. Uh, a lot of questions are answered. A lot more mysteries are revealed. We deal with Judge Gallows in a really fun way. We get to know Dora a little bit more and find out that she is, in fact, not an Endless, as far as we know. That's good, sure, right? Though. You were, like, annoyed that it was going to happen. Yeah, right, right. And the thing that's born isn't an Endless either. It's, like, some sort of AI thing. Like a robot? It says they. It seems to think it's an AI. It doesn't know what it is. Fair enough. And it creates a form for itself. Okay. It tries to, like, it researches things it should look like. And it's just like, ah, oh, I see that lunar moths are adorable. So it makes itself a lunar moth, but it has, like, a chibi version of Dora's face. It's really messed up looking. <laughs> and Dora's like, there is nothing cute about anything that you're doing right, right now. I'm not a, yeah, this, this is not is cute and endearing. And you should stop right now. Yeah. Um, but it seems that the next issue they hinted at is going to be um, not following that story. We're going to take a quick little breather. Yeah. And go talk about Dream a little more. Totally. So I was like, okay. Good, because he left. So let's let's well, get him. Well, he left, but seemingly he's also dying. Oh, yeah, that's right. So I'm interested to see... What and you're kind of like, well, dude, good, get out of here. Goodbye. Uh, go- Bye, Daniel Hall. Goodbye. You know, his his reign has been longer yeah. than Morpheus's. Well, yeah, but he hasn't done anything. Well, that's true. Only because nobody wants to do anything with him because Daniel Hall's really boring. It's just so like... Mm. Yeah. I'm Daniel Hall. <laughs> no one finds me interesting. Oh. Um, overall, though, um, this this issue has really started to win me over more so. I have enjoyed it. I know. The series I, you so you kind of dipped a little bit in your enthusiasm for it. I did. On well, round issue four or five. Yeah, only because it just... It, I don't know. It seemed like they were putting too much emphasis on Dora. Um, hmm. But... I don't know. Things seem to be shaping out a little differently. So I'm. I'm... Dora is still the main character, though, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So is it a recommendation? Um, I mean, like this is not the the book to start with, or the series. Well, but you can get seven and start. Yeah, yeah. Actually. But I would start with one. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Makes sense. You can do that. Maybe very, wait for the trade at this point. Oh, definitely. But just so you can grab seven. Yeah. When it comes out. Uh, <laughs> Tevi Smolga says, "Why can't Snyder write Superboy? That'd be a good book." Yeah. Um, he doesn't want to. No. And I don't mean that from, like, you know, because he told me. It's just more like, Snyder can write any book he wants. So, if he's not doing it, it's because he doesn't want to. There you go. Uh, and music and other stuff. I like that. Says, just got my first job after college. Congratulations! Congratulations, man. That is hard to do. That's incredible. It was so hard for me, I just had to create a job. <laughs> No, but seriously, congratulations. That is no small accomplishment. No, and he wanted to give his pers- first paycheck to us. Well, part of his first paycheck. Yeah, well, thank <laughs> you very much. Yeah, part of it. Thank you. No, no, hang on to it. Don't give me the paycheck, but hang thank you very much. Well, I'll take a portion. I'll take a cut. Yeah, why not? Uh, but thank you so much, man. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, a good recommendation. What, what, you got another one? Do you? I got one more book. All right, well, we'll do yours first. Okay. Because mine's awesome. Oh, cool. Mine's not. It's called Young Justice Number Two. It's written by <laughs> Brian Michael Bendis with art by Patrick Gleason. Okay. Um, this first issue, I likened to the New Avengers because it was very uh, similar in tone and uh, execution. You're watching the teams all get together and well, the, the the team form and watch Bendis play with character and dialogue and stuff. And you basically did the same thing. Um, oh no. Amethyst's reign over Gemworld may, in fact, be threatened by upstarts and usurpers, but then Amethyst teams up with Robin, because Robin got separated from the team and sent to Gemworld on the last issue, and uh, poor Patrick Gleason has to draw Tim Drake in the old-school 90s Tim Drake Robin suit, Uh which has more or less been approximated to be Damien's suit yes. so throughout the book it looks like Damien but it's not it's Tim Drake so I'm sorry that's very distracting oh, all right. um, but I've been waiting to see Tim Drake and his old duds forever so I'm glad to see it yeah. uh, also Jenny Hex and Teen Lantern run into Wonder Girl Okay. They're all stuck in Gemworld, by the way. Okay. And, uh, oh no, like, Jenny is all rootin' tootin' and six-gun shootin', very, like, abrasive. Will these girls get along? Uh, probably. Uh, but... <laughs> this book is aimed at a younger I know, audience, no, it's though. just, it's, it's, it's just keep yeah. that in perspective. It here. is, but, like, I need, like, okay, the problem with the New Avengers versus this is, like, New Avengers, right? Like, oh no, will Luke Cage and Spider-Man get along? 
I know who both those characters are. Yeah. Jenny Hex, nobody knows who they are because you just invented them. Right. Teen Lantern, nobody knows who that is. You just invented her. Yeah. Wonder Girl, nobody knows who that is because her, her, her origins are complicated and frustrated and nobody uses her anymore. Right. Well, I mean, then you got like a whole like the magical girl kind of meetup then where it's just like, here are all these girls and they all have personalities. We're going to get to know them. And then I love pick, that and idea. And you pick your favorite one. If Young Justice was Sailor Moon in the DC Universe, <laughs> that's a pitch. That's Gem World, the book. That's not what this is. Uh, then we get a big old flashback to Wonder Girl fighting Despero and uh, then bumping into Zeus. And Zeus wants to give her a special magical artifact and Wonder Girl's like, no, I'm tired of men giving me magical objects. Like, I'm going to find agency and earn it myself. Mm -hmm. And Zeus is like, that doesn't make any goddamn sense, but okay, I'm going to leave now. Sure. Wonder Girl pats herself on the back and then the trio of girls bump into Amethyst and Robin just in time for Opal of Gemworld to say he's going to kick their ass. He'll probably get punched in the nuts and then lose because that's that how might, Bendis works. That might happen. But like, we, it's all been characters going like, zippy, zappy, zoopy. And then like, Opal of Gemworld's like, hey, I'm the bad guy of this book. And you know, it's like, but, but Bendis doesn't care about that shit. So you know, it's going to be like, huh, huh. again, like it's a cute idea that has merit and has been proven to work because <laughs> Bendis has a career. Yeah. I don't think this issue was nearly as good as the first one, but there might be potential in the future. Right. Issue three might turn all around. That's how Bendis works, man. Issue, issue to issue, like New Avengers, Mighty Avengers, when you were reading those books, or when I was reading those books, particularly, like, I was sold, so there were a couple issues where I'm like, oh, that was kind of a dud, but next time. Yeah. And the next time was good. And then sometimes it would be a dud, or sometimes it'd be like, let's focus on Jessica Jones. And it's like, okay, you know what? Fine. I'll grant you that. Issues were also not $5, so, you know. Yeah. It was a simpler time <laughs> five years ago. But, uh... Yeah, so anyway, um, I recommend it if you are sold on this concept. Okay. If you're not, you're not going to be sold on this issue. Well, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I, I read that. And <laughs> I was excited for it, but I was like, eh, it's kind of fun, I guess. I don't know. I don't know if Bendis even knows who these characters are. Okay. Like, I'm really kind of not convinced that he even knows what he's, like, who he's playing with. Okay. That's fair. I guess, yeah. Like, Despero finally shows up, and he's like, I just wanted to use Despero. That'd be kind of fun. And he's relegated to, like, like, a smelly joke. Like, he's so smelly. Now I'm smelly. Will the smell ever get out of my clothes? You know, and then Zeus is like, you're smelly. Did you fight a smelly character? Like, okay. Let's take a break. So... Again, it is for younger audiences, but still, it does seem a little trite. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Wonder Twins is coming out next week. I am not reading at that no, at all. I really don't know that much interest in that myself. So No one was Okay. when it came out. Like, when those characters were introduced. Right. So, not a recommend for you. No, I recommend it if you are sold on this concept. If you're not, right. this won't help. So, okay. Young Justice, there number two. It, there it is. The art's kind of okay, though. All right. Yeah, the art looks fantastic. It's not. It's just, it's fine. I like, I like Patrick Gleason. I like Patrick Gleason too. Because he's very, like, comic booky, Like, in a That's good true. way. In a yeah. really good way. In, like, in a modern way. Yes. In a modern way. And I, and I, and I dig it. Um, Agreed. So, let's talk about, instead, a really cool fantasy-style fighting book Why that not? I read oh, this week. I think I know what you're talking Marvel. about. From Marvel. It was Conan, number three. Oh. Uh, <laughs> written by Jason Aaron with art by Mahood As As Asar Asrar. I get this wrong every time. Yep. Um, but someone on the chat will always correct And me. that's fine, because I, I swear to God I'm going to learn it. Yeah. I'm learn it, because I like this guy's art so much. When we meet him, you want to be like, hi. Hi. Your me. name is this. And he's going to be like, no. And I'm like, damn, damn it. it. The chat kept telling me that was your name. Or it'll be like, I totally just didn't get it right no. at all. Just sign my book. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, this issue focuses mainly on a 17-year-old Conan. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. Yeah. He's huge. <laughs> I would assume that Conan, like, well, for all we know, Conan is 17. Really? No, <laughs> he's not. What? Because no. he's huge. <laughs> um, but, uh, Conan's in a, uh, realm called, uh, Nemedia or Nemedia. Okay. 
And uh, it's like a mining town. There are an area. There's other towns nearby. Um, one of them's very rich. There's a town center. There's a gold mine there. Uh, criminals or those who insult others are uh, sent to the mines to mine for gold. And those who are thieves are sent to the Red Tree Hill, where there is a tree there. That people Do they are... hang you? <laughs> yes. And it, it's red with blood. Blood, yeah. And it's actually on the side of a, on a, on a precipice of a cliff where there's all these like uh, wild, rabid dogs that just show up. And they'll eat the person okay so it's kind of like uh uh who's the dude who gets his pancreas eaten in what in mythology oh oh yeah i don't remember but yes kind of it's just really the dogs just show up oh yeah exactly no but like they're they're part of this whole mythology free meat neat that's cool so anyway um conan is captured oh no um it takes a lot to bring him down though but like the people of N- Nemedia mm-hmm. um, are like, here's the thing. Like, I get it. Sometimes, like, they don't abide by thieves yeah. at all. But they're like, I get it. Sometimes people get so, so hungry that they steal to, to feed themselves or mm-hmm. steal to save someone or something like that. They can't comprehend a person who steals to live by that. Ah, yes. And as we know... Conan spends a bit of his life being as a, thief, a thief, yeah. And he's been like for weeks now stealing his way through Nemedia and finally he is caught by being um he, he thinks he's going to get away but then like these guards slow him down and inevitably they bring a mine down on top of him like a mountain on top of him and they dig him out and he's still alive and he's fighting them. And now, even after that it's like he kills five guards before they finally get him. Sure. And um they go to hang him. And really this story is things that happen to Conan. Okay. Like, and we get... That's a, the kind of story I usually hate. No, I where actually... Where it's like a bunch of stuff that happens. I really like it because they use it as a tool to explain, like, part of the main plot that's going on. This idea that Conan has experienced death X amount of times. And it's like, how is it possible that he hasn't died yet? Right. And, like, they explain something of this in here because um, they go to hang Conan and they hang him off of one of the, the um, branches that have hung many a person. And they have to huge, use this big, huge, thick rope, and they hang him. And, like, even Conan at 17 has faced death many times. And he's just, like, he realizes that he's, like, I, and yet he's never felt his life leaving his body so quickly. Mm. And that's when the, the limb snaps because okay. he couldn't take the weight <laughs> of, his of this great awesome northerner. Muscularity. Well, because after, of all the, the muscularity, um, but mm-hmm. after having all those other people who had been on it Oh, the time, I see. Yeah, they wore it off. And then yeah. they threw this big oaf on it. And it cracks it and then he uses it attached to his neck to start fighting people off Mm -hmm. inevitably like he breaks the arm of like the main guy and uh, they do take conan down and they put him away in in prison because like the guy who he broke the arm of wants his arm to heal so he himself can swing the axe when they kill him okay he's like screw you you're bad and all the townspeople are like you are bad (laughs) you're a bad person we don't like you sure and um so while he is in jail he sends for a priest Okay. And this priest uh, follows Mitra or Mitra mm. and like tries to get him to repent. And he's just like, I don't know if you have a god where you come from. Krom. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he says Krom a lot in this. <laughs> um, to hell with you. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that comes up. Um, oh, by the way, he also pulls the tree down. Oh, cool. So he, you can never use it again. Yeah, no, he, he pushes it down onto them. Ugh. And so it's it's like he, he ruins their tree, too. Like, they're, they're like, <laughs> their, their, their way of law. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... That's dope. He's just like, he goes like, shout, like, the priest finally, like, comes to it where he's just like, you know, it's okay, you could be sad. Like, I get it, because you are going to die. That's going to happen. Right. But it's all right. Like, shall I pray with you? And he's like, you know, Chimerians or... Is it Sumerians or Chimerians? I think, well, Sumerian is an actual thing. I know it's thing. Sumerians, but Sumerian yeah, or I, I've Chimerian. Heard it, I've heard Sumerian, okay. but I've also heard Chimerian. I know, so, so I'm never, because I'm, never, yeah. I'm not from, uh, you know, Conan's time. Mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, we don't pray. And instead he grabs the guy because he's going to use him as a hostage. Yeah. And instead, the main dude shows up, but it's just like, no, kill the priest. Right. We'll just say Conan killed the priest. Conan killed the priest. Now they're like firing at the priest and everything. Yeah, they fire at the priest. Uh. They kill him. They're like, Conan killed the priest. Take, take the priest and make him go away. So then later on, they take Conan to the edge of the cliff where they're like, okay, here's the thing. Um, you broke the limb from our tree, so I'm going to rend each of the limbs from your body. Naturally. And um, then I won't throw you over to the dogs until you beg me to do so. Okay. And so here we go. It's going to be great. And Conan, like he gets in Conan's face and Conan goes, if you swing that axe, you will die. And like Conan's like, 
like later on thinking about this is like why did i say that like i really had nothing behind that like i that's but i so, meant it that is very conan yeah like why did i say that like i really what was i gonna do so they lash him down to the trunk of the tree that's fallen mm-hmm. and um it was this beautiful like day and as the guy approaches with the axe the the, the skies grow dark and a lightning storm comes up oh the guy struck raises by the axe and he's, he's struck down that's awesome and like literally like um right before that happens conan yells crom damn you and like he's either damning him or he's damning crom because crom oh crom damn you yeah crom yes. damn you oh it's just it depends on how you want to, to parse that there's no punctuation with it oh there's no common no okay then it's crom damn you yeah um so anyway guy gets struck down and then like Conan's like, anyone else want to pick up the axe? Yeah. And he just gets off the tree, he picks up the axe, and he leaves. But what's cool is that, like, he has this moment where he's just like, I don't like to think that it was a god who saved me, because if they save me, they have something worse planned for me. Yeah. And he's just like, yeah, I know it wasn't Crom. Right. And, like, so, like, yeah, there's been... a legend that happens from that where it's just like, oh, obviously, because that guy killed the priest... Mitra struck oh, him down. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. But then also, like the next time a, a priest of Mitra or Mitra would show up it, at this at Nemedia, um, he would find that there were followers of Mitra, but now there were also followers of, of a Krom. northern god. <laughs> yeah, it's like really cool. That is cool. And so then we go back to we flash forward to the the, the present where uh, King Conan was at on the battlefield and he was struck down, mm-hmm. and now he's on the cart of the Crimson Witch. Mm. And um, the idea is that like. We're going over all the times that Conan's almost died as yep. he's being brought to bring forth the blood god, basically. And I'm like, that's really cool. I just yeah. this book is so good. <laughs> like, I just love it so much. It's like such a treat. It's always the last book I read when it comes out because I can't wait to go through it. Sure. Um, the book looks beautiful, and like honestly, like oh my god, the like the cover art for these these books. Yeah. Like, this is the cover for the it's next usually one. Usually Mike Del Mundo, so yeah, that's, that's great. the next one. Yeah, it's King, King Conan, Conan on his throne. Sweet. So good. So yeah. good. That's so. a story for another time. Right. I'm telling you, like this is my favorite Marvel book. They even mention like they're talking about gods just in general. This mm-hmm. book really focuses on that this issue. Okay. And they mentioned that, like, when the priest is talking, he's like, I've heard of, he mentions the Picts, which we dealt with in the last issue, and what they worship. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I've heard there were places, East or wherever, um, that, like, so, like uh, so worship serpents. And I was like, ah! Yay! Yes! Cool. Go down, take care of that. Exactly. Don't, don't you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So that's a recommendation. For yes. Me. Oh, yeah. Conan's dope. Mm-hmm. By the way, if you like Conan, watch our episode of Elseworlds Exchange yeah. where I chat with the Bard because we talk about supervillains, but we wind up talking about Conan for a good Yeah, because the Bard is like, listen, I like Conan, but like I'm a, a newer like person to it, but like the Bard is like an old school Conan fan. Yes. He knows Conan. It's true. So. <laughs> Check out Bardic Broadcast. Yeah. Uh, Sam Anderson says, shout out to Female Furies, which is a very Me Too book, so not for everyone, but the writing's great in that old school vernacular, and the art is gorgeous. There you have it. I haven't had a chance to read it, so I'll check it out. And uh, Harvarian Wonder says, will you guys be watching Justice League vs. The Fatal Five? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, I need to know how integral Bruce Timm's writing is to the story. If he wrote it, then I will hate it. Well, why don't we just watch it and then find out? That's Well, I'm just going to look it up. Don't look it up. Just not right it. now. No. Why? I'm not gonna waste time on a movie that I really won't, won't enjoy. <sighs> I'm just saying, like, why would I waste time watching something that I know is gonna be? Well, crappy? how about instead of worrying about wasting time, why don't we not waste time and tell people about what we're going to recommend for this Wednesday's okay. new comics? Uh, obviously, I'm going to recommend Detective Comics number 998. We're very close to the end here, ladies and gentlemen. That's not the end. Um, well, the 1,000 mark. <laughs> which, by the way... Then they're just going to pack it up. Then they're going to stop just... doing it, because that's usually what happens when you've like, just, hit 1,000 issues. They're just going to close DC down. That's it. Yep. Thanks Thanks for coming, everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's written by Peter Jusmasi with art by Doug Mankey, mm-hmm. uh, which is a great combination. It really is. Um, definitely pick it up. It's a great series. If you love Batman, but you are not liking the Batman book, this is the book to get. Right. Um, if you, To satisfy your monthly fix, uh, it's totally dope. Check it out. Dope. Uh, uh, also, uh, Detective Comics 1000 is going to have a midnight release at Zap Comics. <gasps> and really? I'm going to go. So, oh. see you there. If you're gonna what, be is around. it April? Uh, no. <laughs> March. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh. Soon. So, 998. Check I it out. I wonder if I can go, too. Oh, uh, probably. 
Uh, <laughs> the Batman Who Laughs number three from Scott Snyder and Jock also comes out. Excellent. This week. I love this series. Buy it. Okay. Um, DC The New Frontier is getting a trade paperback release under the Black Label line. Doesn't make any sense through it being a Black Label book, but it is an incredible series. It's one of our most requested back issues they've ever had for us. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grab the Absolute Edition there. That's why it's not a back issues. Oh my god. Also because it may be one of the most beautiful DC books ever made. And I almost don't... I don't want to do it because I don't want to think about the time when I walked right past uh, Darwin Cook and then said, next time I'll talk to him. And that was the year he died. Uh, it's one of the most perfect interpretations of the DC Universe. So, if you're looking for this, but you want to save some cash, it comes out uh, in trade this week. Um, if you liked Avengers No Surrender, Avengers is doing another weekly series in that same vein. It's by Al Ewing, with art by Paco Medina. It's called Avengers No Road Home, number one of ten. Um, if you hate Avengers like I do right now, maybe this is the book to get. Because, man, uh, Aaron's doing a great job with Conan, Cause and he's just whizzing Avengers. Here's my, I, my take on that. I think he does better with a single or smaller group. Right. Like, I, I don't think his strength is in a, a large team book. Well, then you're not going to enjoy War of the Realms, which is the latest and greatest event for Marvel Comics, which will be written entirely by Jason Aaron and involve everything he's been doing on Thor since he started. Wow. It's the culmination point of everything he's working on. you know what, though? On. Like, Thor, like, he's got that kind of whole thing he's on lockdown. He's got Thor on lockdown, so yes. that might work out. Yeah, but everyone else is also in it. Well, we'll see. And we'll it's see an how event. it goes. Will Conan um, be in it? <laughs> I My guess is that Conan will show up at the end the way that Angela showed up at the end of, like, whatever the hell story. Age of Ultron. Maybe he'll pick up the hammer. <laughs> Thor has a hammer now. It's not well. The hammer went in the sun anyway. But yeah, well, yeah. that'd be dope. Maybe he'll pick up a different hammer. I'm down. <laughs> uh, Rusky nine one one zero says, "Is Doomsday Clock still happening? I don't remember an issue <laughs> releasing in 2019. It is still happening. Uh, the book will come out uh, someday. Um, not before the end of 2020, but it is uh, still continuing. It will come out. It will finish. It will finish, and then." When it does, they're going to do everything they can to make you forget about the delays. So you're going to see trades and absolute editions and hardcovers. Just everything, and it's going to get on every list, and everyone's going to talk about how great it is. So, like, you know, forget about it until the hardcover comes out. <laughs> um, also, Nick Spencer's Amazing Spider-Man comes out. There you go. Uh, Botchlo's still on it, but uh, we're also going to see Black Ant and Taskmaster fight Spider-Man. So that's going to be fun. Neat. Uh, the cover's great. It is cool. That's yeah. actually really fun. Just a very pretty Spider-Man cover. Yeah, it is. Very nice. Uh, you got a couple of recommendations. I well? do. Um, if you're digging this Conan train, uh, Savage Sword of Conan's coming out. It is not written by Jason Aaron. Instead, it's written by Jerry Dugan. I still think that's worth a, a check. Um, with R by Ron Garney and cover by Alex Ross. So if you want to see Conan depicted by Alex Ross, you can go check this out. It's like a bunch of skeletons on it. Yeah. Skeletons. This is like a Conan Renaissance. Uh, I know. If Duggan can do a cool supplemental Conan book, yeah, then yeah. you know exactly. Hell exactly. yeah! I'm not sure how these will if they'll tie in at all, even remotely. But if you're looking for it, there's more Conan for you to have. Um, also from Marvel, Mr. And Mrs. X number eight is coming out, so I'm excited for that. Um, but of course, uh, Rogue and Gambit have been captured by Mojo, and mm -hmm. they're going through all that. And they don't quite have their memories and Spiral has been questioning Mojo, so... And I think she thinks Gam is attractive. Uh, obviously oh, by this cover. does she? Is she a heterosexual woman? <laughs> and there you have it. Um, I also want to mention uh, that from DC, uh, the trade paperback for Mr. Miracle is coming out. For all of you who waited on this one, now is your chance. Now you can finally read Mr. Now's Miracle. Now is your chance. Well, because some people, like, it was too far into it and they didn't want to go back and get the floppies. Yeah. And it was like, you couldn't pick up from where it was. Now is your chance. I'm going to grab it because I think it's going to be a very different read to read it all simultaneously than reading issue to issue because I'm sure for me some things were forgotten panel to panel. Oh, totally. So I'm excited to grab this yes. uh, by Tom King and Mitch Jarrods. Of course, it'll also be back issues in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I want to check that out as well, but get the trade first. Yeah. Because when this trade comes out this week, I'm buying it, and then you're going to do back issues in like two weeks. Nice. So. Um, and then for uh, an indie pick, 
Hey, fans of Magic and Mark Miller and liked my recommendation of Magic Order. Magic Order number six is finally coming out. This is six of six. This is the end of this series. That's it's, it? The whole series? It's a mini series. So this is it. This is the finale. This is one of those that's been picked up. They're making this. Of course. Well, six issues. Yeah, you can make that out of a show. I said I wanted it, and they made this happen. Yay. Uh, no, it's not because I said I wanted it. I like to think well, so. Well, no, it's part of the Millerverse. <laughs> no, is. Mark Miller made a deal. But this He's got to make it. Yeah, this is, this is one of the ones I was like, this is going to be great if they can do this right. Just get some actors who can act. Just and act. It's been phenomenal. I love this series. Um, it is a very sort of, um, I don't want to say it's like a godfather, but you have those elements of like family and this sort of like mafia style feel to it without sure. going too far towards that okay. necessarily. Um, with having magicians involved who have real magic, kind of like that Satana, but you know, not quite there. Yeah. So really great, huge, like, you know, reveal in issue five. Can't wait to see how this is all going to sum up in issue six. Sweet. I, I hope you can stick the landing on this one. So also too. art by Olivia, Olivier Quapel. So it is so it's beautiful. Great yeah. Quapel <laughs> rocks, man. That was our biggest disappointment. He wasn't at New York Comic Con this year, so you couldn't tell him he was he was crushing. He it. doesn't need me to tell him. That no, he's crushing but he it, likes to hear it. But like, dude, he's crushing it. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Comics Mix explains says Conan's going to team up with the Avengers in issue six of No Road Home. It's true. Uh, the rumor is that Conan's actually going to join the Avengers. <laughs> getting a quick phone call. Oh, okay. Well. I'll be right back. Uh, and of course, Havarian Wonder says, "Is DC Rebirth Green Arrow good?" I don't know, because I'm not reading it. Or, or never, I didn't read it. Um, I picked up the first issue when, um, God, I think it was, um, I don't remember who was on it, but like, not the the art. Uh, the, ch the art was incredible, and then it changed, and it wasn't as exciting or memorable but uh yeah go to go to twitter go to youtube or twitter.com slash cape joel or youtube.com slash cape joel and ask him because he's a huge green arrow fan uh was it oliver or something who i know oliver is also green arrow but who drew green arrow when rebirth started oh Do you remember? i don't he was so good he was great. and then he had to leave and that was that so um I've snowed more. Yay! <laughs> I was like, I have to take this call. I know. I have to know. So uh. that's fantastic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so with that in mind, uh, we want to thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Of course, if you uh, want to check out that's the- That's it. O oh, Otto Schmidt. I was like, it, you saying Oliver? I was like, Yeah, I was no. like, it's an O. It's, no, it's, but it's a very specific, specific name. Yeah. I love, yeah. Because I kept it. thinking Sheety and Oliver. No, and no, no. It's Otto Schmidt. Otto Schmidt. So there you have it. Mm -hmm. Um so, if you like this show, check out the audio version over on uh, iTunes. At, yes. uh, it's under Elseworlds Exchange, but it's basically a bonus show. Because mm -hmm. um, you got to pay extra if you have, like, separate shows oh. to, like, host them. So, <laughs> instead of doing that, it's just that Elseworlds comes out twice a week. So, there you go. Uh, go to Elseworlds on iTunes. And, of course, uh, go to comicpop.podbean.com. Check us out there. Um, more importantly, we have a Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash comicpop to get behind the scenes and weekly updates about what's going on and also early access to back issues, which I need to post uh, post haste. Uh, so in addition to that, uh, we also released a new show. Um, it's called Comic Pop Remembers, where I do like a little like three-minute retrospective. Yeah. Um, we did it on Maximum Carnage. It seems to be dead, so I don't think the show's going to continue. But if like it finds new life in the next two days, like we'll keep doing it. I think but you should at least I do think it died. one more. I will see. It was very disheartening to see it fail so badly. Uh, but that being said, I think that's it. Do you have any uh, any other things that are happening besides, uh, besides got, the Patreon? I know I that there's nothing. a purple thing that you guys that yeah, you work on. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you like gaming, you can head over to the purple channel, uh, Comic Pop TV over there, mm -hmm. and uh, hang out with me on Wednesdays and Sundays. Uh, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, Wednesday, I'm going to be doing some more um, The Last of Us, which yes. is a blind playthrough for me. I don't know anything about the story other than what I have experienced so far. And then Sundays we're doing some Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you uh, you just started playing that. And uh, so yeah. you like gaming. So, so I just just barely made it through the prologue. Oh, yeesh. It's four hours. It's fine. Yeah. It's good. But if you got if you got a couple hours, you don't do the whole massive, crazy, long streams, five, six hours. It's two hours. It's a, it's a manageable time. Yeah. You hang out with Tiffany and uh, sometimes Danielle and you yeah. watch and play some video games. So does you, too. I do occasionally jump in. Um, but... Uh, you know, but I also like to use that time to like edit, and that's really helpful. Exactly. 
But uh, yeah, so if you want to com- communicate with us, of course, you can find Tiffany over at twitter.com slash the real zoobs. That's me. And me at uh, twitter.com slash Sal says what. Um, anyway, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. Of course, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell to get notifications every time this show goes live and any other video we make goes live, which is many different uh, shows that we make here. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and enjoy your snow day if you get it. And if not, be careful out there, ladies and gentlemen, because yeah. uh, also you know, if you're watching this in the future, you know, well, then hopefully we made it. Yeah. The snowstorm. I'll tell you this. It's snow joke. So, you know, be careful out there. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us and we'll see you guys next time. I'm Sal. Tiffany. So long. <laughs>